Welcome to my talk. So, uh, my name is Brian. Uh, it's the first time I'm presenting, so uh, be nice with me. Uh, so, yeah, basically, the, the whole talk comes from the news of recently uh, the, the pass away of uh, Sim Wong Ho, who was the chief, exec chief, chief executive officer of uh, Creative, Lab, Creative Labs or Creative Technology. The most famous company in Singapore. Um, <clears throat> so Creative uh, Labs was really uh, famous for the creative uh, the song blaster uh, cards. And uh, I am more interested in the electro intellectual property, basically what's the uh, pattern and all the good stuff, good ideas, etc. of uh, of Creative Labs and Creative Technology. So for, for this, uh, I usually uh, Oh yeah, so so just there's a video on the internet. I'm not sure if you want to watch this one, but it's quite an old video where uh, some demonstrator explain really the the novelty of all the creative uh, the sound, etc. On, on the cards. It's quite a very poor quality video, actually. So um, maybe we'll we'll pass uh, for this presentation. <laughs> no, 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 there was no HD. But you know, it's very very interesting to see the uh, mapping the you know different sound and they created this kind of standard. Um, Today, Creative uh, Technology has uh, their office. I'm not sure, maybe one of you actually worked for Creative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's uh, Interna International Business Park Road. So actually, I guess we can go and visit because I think they have a, uh, a technology demonstrator or some sort of... Uh, yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, but that's right. So, you know, maybe that's some activity we can also try to have yeah. from a hyperspace point of view. Yeah. To actually go and visit those, those companies in Singapore because at the end of the day, it'd be interesting to see uh, what they still do. Uh, it's still very active, actually. Uh, of course, in terms of a, of a, of a share, uh, share price, uh, this is uh, Google Finance. I was looking, uh, you know, from maybe 20 to uh, five was probably, you know, uh, $15. And then, you know, uh, so, somehow in... Uh, 2018, I guess there's been a, a bit of a jump. I don't know why. Maybe you know some news uh, or something uh, happened. But obviously, if you bought some uh, creative technology chairs, you should have loaded them quite some time ago. Uh, well, it depends on the market. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, from 15 to one point something. The math, the, the, the math is. Uh, it's the share. No, but then. Uh, it's a task for you to do for next time. We, we know we know who you are. <laughs> Sorry. So is this current basic feature? Is the maximum? No, but I mean, is it basically the story of every motherboard having a built-in sound card? No, 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 not really. Because actually, at the at its peak, uh, you know, Creative Lab was very healthy as a company. Uh, they even bought EMU, they bought quite some company, they moved to the States uh, and then slow down uh, afterwards. I think I still received some uh, like advertisement email and they still do, uh, you will see in the pattern, some small speakers, uh, a lot of accessories, etc. Actually, they're still quite active, but- Yeah, but my question is like, is it just because the integrated sound um, chips have been in their land? Is that what's happening to you? Uh, yeah, the most, most probably, yeah, yeah. If you have a, if you buy a motherboard these days, I think the chipset is, is much more advanced than than, than what they had. Yeah, in a, in a, but the the real thing was for them to have a you know a, a standardized uh, card, and they had this kind of uh, protocol and and kind of mapping of specific sound and that was standardized. So they were the kind of you know, father of this standardization for sound and PC. Um, so. Yeah. I think this presentation is quite short, so you know, we, we will talk forever about a lot of aspects. And I think it's nice to have you know, someone who works there. Yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> of course, it's recorded, so you can't see too much. Uh, so uh, I, I do, uh, so, so I work for ESTAR, so actually everything I, I say here is nothing to do with my, my work in ESTAR, and everything I say is my own opinion. Uh, so uh, when actually, you know, the news mentioned that he's passed away, I'm like, Okay, you know what sort of uh, of uh, pattern they have because uh, over the years a lot of companies like this they actually file a lot of patterns. Um, so I go to Google Patterns uh, and I basically specify 
creative technology, LTD. But actually, when you actually uh, see the list of, of actual companies, there's also uh, uh, Inc., which is the one that they register in the US, there's Hong Kong. So actually, there's actually eight uh, uh, entities that actually relate to this. And also, there's actually in Taiwan and, and, and Australia some creative something technology limited to so actually. You have to do a proper search uh, for this. So I save the text files, and then later on, I'm an old guy using MATLAB. So actually, I have a script that generates all sorts of stuff. And I was um, specifically interested in, in, the, in the inventors uh, because the, um, back in the 90s, when I was doing my PhD, I actually referred to some of those patterns and some of those researchers who used to be uh, working for EMU or Creative Lab, who are now working for other companies. And each pattern, uh, <clears throat> has basically the same format is that each of the title, the abstract, the inventors, the date at which has been applied, public, uh, sorry, published, and also granted. So there's actually a lot of information on like this. The number of claims, what is important in, in this is, is not really the number of paid and the number of figures, it's really the claim that they actually say is novelty. You get a patent because it's novel. Ultimately, you file usually a worldwide application. But most of the time, the, the business is in the US, so actually it's transformed usually in the US to have licenses, et cetera. So I tried to look at actually the peak of the, of the, the, the patterns. So they have about 360 uh, patterns, but I think it's 378 in total. Um, and then I look, you know, from 96, which probably was maybe some of the early work to a peak is maybe in 2007. And actually, have you know a lot of filing up to 2010, and suddenly it's actually going down. So either the company at that time was really going down in terms of shrinking the business, or sometimes companies don't actually want to file. They just have a different direction. They don't actually uh, try to exploit some of the patterns. Maybe for product that you do, you don't actually need patterns. Uh, so this is more or less like a trend. It's a peak. Companies like IBM or Intel, they have a, like a straight line, they're patenting everything, and it's very, very constant. Um, um, I use a, a tool called a word cloud from the word. So every patent, I basically take the whole uh, title, I split into words, and then I look uh, at the kind of frequency at which this word has been used. Uh, so we can see that you know they're, they're doing players, system, digital loudspeaker device, Method for sound signals, control, electronic media apparatus, camera, headset, electronics. So this is their core uh, domain. And then afterwards, uh, um, for, for this presentation, I have two five PDF that I put uh, somewhere on my GitHub. You can take that uh, graph and basically zoom and have some, you know, other other. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, keywords like see conversion, multimedia frequency, which have been used in use less. But this is only based on the title, so you can also extract the uh, use the abstract, which is a longer description of that invention, and do the same, and then suddenly pick up. Uh, so if you're interested in FPGA, let's say you try to pick, you know, which pattern have FPGA word or specific uh, specific keywords. So it might interest because I'm using MATLAB. A lot of patterns have some examples, so I use MATLAB or an old DSP or Motorola. Or in your case, if you like STM32. You basically try to find you know, some pattern to refer to this because maybe you're interested in this. So, like I said, device audio camera. So, this is a company who's really much into multimedia camera devices. And this will show into uh, another the other document when I present afterwards. This is a list wow. of all the unique 300 plus inventors. So, your name might be on it if you have actually <laughs> your name on the pattern. Uh, for me, uh, as a couple of people, uh, I cannot see here now, but basically there's a guy called Jean Laroche. Uh, I think I, I, I put in board, yeah. I think from, from my angle, I can see, but Jean Laroche is Jean-Luc, uh, Jean Jean-Marc Yeah, yeah, so, so these guys were basically uh, researchers. They actually work in Nierkan, et cetera, some French guys who actually work for Creative Labs, who work for EMU, for a lot of companies. And uh, these are some people that over the years, I still track what they publish, what they patent because they are, uh, very much involved in ASIC design and, and electronics. What you have to be careful is actually uh, the pattern that tell me when they file those, uh, sometimes you have uh, names which are double yeah. because basically the spelling or, you know, um, uh, sing one something, the guan could be guan, could be j, j dot, etc. cetera. So actually, even in those uh, documents, it's legal, but sometimes they make mistakes. 
So in my case, my name is Amadi Sharef, but in my work, they file something like Sharef. So suddenly, I mean, you cannot go back and say, no, my name is. So these are all the old names. And for, for 300 patents and having so many uh, you know, names, it's actually quite good to see actually there's a lot of, uh, of people from the, from the from that company which he uh, files. Of course, um, being a European, you can see that there's a lot of uh, Asian names, but you can pick a couple of, you know, uh, like maybe European or, or, or else. Uh, for example, Alan Pivers is, is a famous guy. Yeah. And actually, yeah, Alan W. Pivers, I just have to have Alan Pivert. That's probably uh, maybe a uh, no, the, the one after. So the W here is actually the same. So this one, uh, the, the, this usually, when you process those databases, there's usually a lot of mistakes, a lot of uh, spelling things that you can uh, feel attacked with. So to give you an example, uh, <laughs> I'm interested in audio and specifically audio signal processing. So this would be an example of a, of a patent. Um, so when the patterns are filed, they usually filed with A1, A2, A3, then they become kind of really valid. So they become B, B1, B2. And this one is on audio uh, single processing and the enhancement of. Um, then you have this small abstract, the frequency band of an audio signal is analyzed to determine the transient. So the transient is not the, the kind of sustained part, it's more like the, the building up of the sound, et cetera. So then you have a system that makes some of the, uh, alternative path and then you do some low pass filter, etc., or some processing and at the end you normalize. So this is um, a patent uh, diagram that summarizes kind of the invention. And usually the numbers in the text, uh, the signals or the blocks, they usually refer with numbers. That's the kind of uh, the way that they, they write out. And then uh, there's another file. So uh, from this, uh, so the, same tab, right? yeah, sorry, sorry. It's actually the same tab. Same so, yeah. So, uh, so uh, because it's a text file, what I usually do is I actually create a LaTeX file. My MATLAB generate extract fields and I create a figure and a caption. And then after the exception, I have the number of the patterns. So if you are interested, so I put these files, uh, basically I put it online. These are all the patterns uh, of uh, Creative Labs. And if you are interested in reading more, for example, this one is about 3D MIDI, you would uh, go here on the, on the PDF. And when you click here, it basically go into the patent uh, website that you can get the, the PDF and then you can read more. And uh, to my surprise, the, the a lot of patterns actually are, are design patterns in the sense that it's not about uh, systems, electronic system with filters, down sampling, mixing. H HRTF is about the representation of the ear, uh, like to, to add some effects, etc. But actually, a lot of it is headsets, uh, uh, speakers, uh, device, etc. So it, it's a little bit, uh, we know Creative Lab for maybe the uh, you know, the sound blaster, etc. But actually, there's a lot of the technology now is on gadget devices, loudspeakers, uh, and often some of those uh, are related to some audio enhancement. So actually, create, creative have a lot of technology and a lot of uh, of um, skill set, I guess, within that that inter company uh, of engineers, which are not electronics, like, you know, some of the PSP, et cetera, but also from the design point of view and probably mechanic, uh, CAD, et cetera. So, so the design, so the painting, the design, right? yeah. the look of it. So actually um, the design uh, is a specific pattern that would protect the shape or the kind of, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the beauty of it in a sense. So that when someone comes with a, with a, a webcam with a, you know, with a, like a support, uh, you would basically file, a, I mean, file some legal thing saying it looked too much as you know, like it. But that's trademark. That's not that. Does. That's a different thing, right? But for it's for this, brand protection is trademark. Yeah, yeah, but for for this, it's actually a pattern, but it's a design. So this one is three-way mm -hmm. camera. Is, actually, this one is not a design, but when you have a D. Uh, you see USD, mm -hmm. so these are the designs. So they have uh, 
some of them actually look like an iPod or you know, an I, like old iPad, etc. Some of them are dealing with uh, you know, earpods. Um, this one is actually generating the, the customized uh, uh, transfer function of your ears. Uh, and then others are more receiving a single, uh, uh, doing an FFT single processing and then spectral enhancement of the frame, etc. So these are more like a, a modification of, of audio signals. Uh, so if you're interested in, in you know, what um, Creative Lab over the years have been patenting because these are the interesting <laughs> things that they have done, um, you can basically go and, and read more, more details about this. Uh, search study can be applied to any company, any topic, because once you actually get the title, you get those files and you can basically do it. And as much as a, as a researcher, we like to write paper and we like to write to read publication, these are novelties which are really, really there and are uh, underneath all these projects, like I know the iPod and everything. So I, I think the, yeah, this is more the, the end of my talk. I, I think the last point I would like to make is uh, when, uh, I just say, yeah, just a I can go back. I can go back to the one. Oh, no, sorry. Previous yeah. yeah, when when we see the, uh, you know the, um, the CEO and that's in the news. You see all the all the drawing behind the CEO. Uh, for me, it's a little bit like you know the the iPod and Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs may have had the idea of the iPod. But behind a lot of engineers have worked a lot, and the name of those engineers are there on those patents. Uh, so within your work, when you actually you know end up patenting things, there's some kind of elevation of your trade or your skill set, etc. Uh, that, that's my point of view. <laughs> so if you have any question, uh, those documents, the PDF, they are they are accessible for you to to look and to explore. Um, yeah. So the thing in his hand, I'm pretty sure that the the Super X5 dongle, which is the thing that in 2018 apparently shot their stock price up because they won the I just did the okay, okay. they won <laughs> the that last big Vegas consumer electronics show best oh, of show. Okay. It's a, it's so it's the last shot to to success. Yeah, it's, it's a handphone. Who knew about this one? Who knew about this? Yeah. yeah, but uh, I don't do anything.